Now I ain't saying he's a gold digger, but no wait, these guys really are gold diggers. Hey folks, Lacey Green here. The word Klondike might summon visions of delicious ice cream goodness, but it's time to switch gears to the Klondike Gold Rush. Crazy story actually, in the late 1800s, gold was discovered up in Alaska in the Klondike River. Because the area was so remote, and it was, you know, the 1800s, it took a whole year for word to get out. Once word did get out, 100,000 people uprooted their lives and headed up to the Klondike region, hoping to strike it rich. But it was a really difficult journey and only about 30,000 people actually made it. And of those, only a small fraction, about 4,000 people, ever found gold. Today I wanted to talk about some notable gold diggers from this fascinating time in history where people's hopes, potential riches, and the stakes were all really high. First up, the man who's now credited with starting it all, James Mason, better known as Skookum Jim. Skookum was a Canadian native who originally packed mining supplies up the snowy Chilkoot Pass. Now this pass was serious, you guys. Seven miles through icy glacial rocks that climbed up over 3,000 feet. Legend has it that he single-handedly carried 156 pounds of bacon up the pass. When he first discovered the gold at Rabbit Creek, they panned enough to fill a shotgun cartridge, and he went on to make an estimated $100,000, or three million today. Stories about who actually discovered the gold first in Klondike are mixed, though. First, a friend of Skookum's named George Carmack was credited because nobody would believe a native. But there are also accounts of Kate Carmack, George's wife, having discovered the gold while the men were taking a nap. I'm pretty sure that of all the successful gold diggers, Kate Carmack got the most screwed. First, possible stolen credit. But that's nothing compared to what came next. During the gold rush, she and her husband George panned and made millions. They moved to Seattle to enjoy their riches, but it was hard on both of them and they missed their home in Dawson. Instead of allowing Kate to come back north with him, George sent Kate to California to live with his sister. He went back alone, enjoying the lavish life and courting other women. And down in California, Kate tried to make a legal appeal for her share of the riches, but the court denied. George took all of their money, and Kate went on to live off government pension in a cabin built by Skookum. Last of our interesting gold diggers today, Jack London. You probably heard that name, right? He wrote one of my old favorites, The Call of the Wild. In his early years, London was a poor man from San Francisco and hoping to escape unemployment, he went to UC Berkeley in my alma mater before dropping out to join the gold rush. The gold rush itself wasn't kind to London. He became malnourished, developed scurvy, and struggled with serious health issues due to the lack of food and shelter. But it's through these hardships that Jack wrote his first successful story, To Build a Fire. He went on to become a very influential socialist and writer. Boom! Redemption. To learn more about The Gold Rush, check out Discovery's new mini-series called Klondike, which is premiering Monday the 20th at 9, 8 central. Thanks for joining me for D News, folks. I'll see you next time.